welcome back to the show again. We thank you so much for being heavenly Father. We thank you that you're that the Holy Spirit is already here. We ask, Holy Spirit, would you teach? Would you guide us? Would you teach us what we need to learn this morning? Help us to see ourselves first and then help us to go out into the community and talk to others about you. How great you how relatable you are, how current you are, how blessed we are to know you. We praise you, Heavenly Father, in this place this morning, and we just ask strength for Brother Hampton as he brings your word to us this morning. Bless each and every heart and every household this morning. I, love, I think, Heavenly Father, that you are just, just awesome and we love you. We love you this morning. We can't give you enough praise. We can't say thank you. And again, as we go into our service, we can't forget our pastor who is traveling and his wife. And we just ask traveling mercies upon them today. And on this afternoon, when the young men are going to be ordained as deacons, uh, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will use them. They'll allow themselves to be used by you. Pastor that's coming in, uh, Reverend Freeman, that you use him also and give him words of encouragement for our new deacons this afternoon. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. And Dean said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Miss Audrey Wilson. This is Miss Audrey Wilson. Unless the Lord guards the king, the watchman stays awake in vain. David to build the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever.
that courage that will come from your body. You shall build a temple for my name.
God is always speaking. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, just want to be with you just for a few moments. Just want to just speak what God had me to say to the church this morning. Thank God for our pastor in his absence. Um, Call me left a message and he said, Mr. Hampton, would you mind? Um, Got to be away. Would you mind speaking at 8 o'clock? I said, sure, Pastor. Whatever you need me to do. Whatever you need me to do, yes. To help the man of God. To help the man of God. This morning, um, my scripture is coming from Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 30. And then my text is coming from verse 25. It's called a praise at midnight. A praise. At midnight, a praise at midnight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. We shall sure rejoice in it. Oh God, somebody didn't wake up this morning. They're called on into glory. The Lord, you so found it fit for us to open our eyes this morning to be in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you that we're able to get up and to dress ourselves and we're able to walk about our homes and look in the refrigerator and we had something to eat this morning. Lord, we find it so that we're here today in the house of worship. Lord, we ask that you just have your way, that the word should go forth and not return void. For you said you watch over your word to perform. Lord, I pray that he that had an ear hear what the Spirit of God has to say today. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for you're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. A praise at midnight. How many know that praise is Amen. Amen. Praise is a weapon. You don't know it or not. The Bible says, for one thing, God inhabits the praises of his people. If you would just take a few moments with me and just use your imagination. If you would just look around, you'll find that beauty comes in the most unlikely places. Amen. A flower breaks through the crack in an asphalt. You wake up in the morning and you hear the birds singing songs on a gray day like today. You see out over the desert sand and there's nothing but just sand as far as the eye could see. All of a sudden, there's a lush green oasis. I want to tell you this morning that God delights in using bleak circumstances to bring glory to his people and to himself. Yeah. Talking about a song at midnight. The Bible tells us that in Acts chapter 16, around verse 14, it says that a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, heard the word of God. And she got saved. And God began to move in that city. And for this, Paul and Silas found themselves in a bad situation. A praise at midnight. Time frame about 50 AD. The scripture tells us that a certain damsel followed 
the men of God around and began to just vex them. Paul turned around and said to the girl, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the scripture said that that very same hour, this unclean spirit came out. The notice that the apostle did not speak to the girl, he spoke to what? The spirit. He spoke to the spirit. The Bible says, therefore, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, but against powers and rulers of darkness. So he began to speak to the spirit. And you know what? That's what it's all about. It's, 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 it's not your neighbor. It's not the person on your job that's vexing you. It's a spirit. Saints of God, I want you to learn this morning also to highlight this, that you need to learn to discern the spirit and speak to that spirit to, to, and it will obey. And the Bible said that he spoke to that spirit and the word of God said he came out that very same hour. That's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's power in the name of Jesus. Now that was an issue that came up here. The Bible says that when this girl, the Bible says that she was a soothsayer, she was a palm reader, she was a fortune teller, she followed the men of God around, and she began to cry. She said, these are men of God. They are serving the most high God. And then the Bible says that the apostle just got mad and just turned around and said, you know, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you, and he came out. We're talking about a song, a praise. At midnight. Verse 20 says that when they cast out the devil and the guys that were making money off this girl got mad. How many know that when you make the devil mad, <laughs> you know, the devil got mad. Devil got mad because that was their money maker. She was their money maker. And the scripture said that they brought them before the masters, before the magistrate, and began, and verse 20 said, these men being Jews, Jews, these Christians, these Christians on the job, they're praying. These Christians on the job, they're talking about praise the Lord. These Christians on the job, they're talking about hallelujah. They brought them before the magistrates, and the Bible said that they're teaching customs. Verse 21 said they're teaching customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. Verse 22 said, and the multitude rose up against them and began to tear out their clothes. And verse 23 says, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they cast them into prison, and they charged the jailer. They said, you know what? I'm going to put these men in prison. If they break out, your blood will be on our hands. And the jailer got so mad, he put them in the dungeon. Amen. Amen. He put them under the jail and put fetters on them and locked them up. We're talking about a praise at midnight. I don't know where you are this morning. You may be in your midnight hour. Amen. You may be in a situation where the doctor tells you tomorrow, sister, the report is not good. That's your midnight hour. Some of you this morning, you don't know where your kids are. That's your midnight hour. Some of you this morning, you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. You got a situation that's facing you, that's your midnight hour. On, Some of you this morning, you got a situation that if God don't do it, it's not going to be done. That's your midnight hour. But I'm here to tell you today that verse 25, which is my text today, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. They sang praises. Amen. They sang praises 
unto God. I want you to bear with me this morning that the Bible says that when they were in that prison, begin to sing songs, Jesus will fix it. Amen. I believe they were singing, Jesus is going to fix this thing. Amen. I believe they were singing, he's going to make everything all right. Amen. I believe they were singing, God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. I'm here to tell you this morning, your midnight hour, begin to worship him. Begin to praise him. Begin to lift up your holy hands this morning. The Bible says that not only were they praising God and singing songs, but the scripture said there were other folk that were in the prison with them. See, you could be in a situation, you could be going through, and there are other people that are watching you. Amen? There are other people that are going through the storm that night. There were other people that were in fetters and chains at night, but only two people know what to do. See, you could be going through on the job. You could be going through in your home. But if you know Jesus, that's all that matters. Out of all the folk in that jail, Two people, Paul and Silas, knew God. Two people knew the power of God to save and deliver. And the Bible says they began to pray. And suddenly, the Bible says, and suddenly, if you begin to praise God, God wants to do a shaking. He wants to do a quaking in your situations. He wants to turn your situation around to where he will make everything all right. And the Bible says that underneath, under the ground, there comes a shake. The Bible says that an earthquake begins to happen. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So I'm going to tell you this morning, whatever you're going through, you may be walking on shaky ground, but the Bible says the earth belongs to him. Amen. The, the Bible says that the, the foundations of the jail begin to crack. The bottom may try to fall out of under you, but God says, my hand is going to hold you up. And the scripture says, as they begin to pray and to sing songs, the chains were loose. This morning, I want to tell you, if you would just begin to praise him, if you would begin to magnify him, God is going to bless you. Psalm 34 says, I want to read it to you. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times in my midnight hour. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, let us exalt his name together. Verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. How many of you have been to a graduation? Amen? There are three levels of praise that are left out here. One there is what they call it, what? Cool life. Now, these are the ones that, you know, did okay. They did pretty good. And then there's what, that's what, magna cool light. Now, I understand that these probably get eight, eight plus folk. You know, they, and then there's what, they what? Summa. These are the ones that get the highest praise. Amen. Where are my summas this morning? Amen. Where's my summas this morning? Amen. Where's my summas this morning? God is worthy of all praise today. Amen. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, I want you to sing a song at midnight. Brother, you wouldn't mind singing that song again for me? Jesus will fix it. Can I, can I get the choir? Could you all just sing that for me again this morning? That he's going to fix it. And while he's singing this song this morning, 
This may be your midnight hour. This may be your time that you don't know what to do. This may be your time that you don't know what the answer is, but God knows. A song at midnight. Let Jesus be Speaking to my heart. It's up to you.
Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this heart condition right now. Father, you said by your stripes we are healed. Father, I speak that this precious lady, before you formed her in the belly of her mother, every organ, every tissue formed to your divine specification. And Father, in the name of Jesus, by your blood, I claim it done now that her heart beats with the rhythm of life. Her kidneys, her lungs, her heart, her spleen, her liver, every part of her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to this heart condition that it be regulated now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, right now that when you form this heart in our mother's womb, you designed it to beat to your rhythm. Oh, Lord, you said you have come to give life and have life more abundantly. Lord, I thank you right now for her right now, Lord. Be healed in Jesus' name, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to just praise him. Begin to just thank him. Hallelujah. Saints of God, praise is a weapon. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Not only will praise do something for you, but also will do something for people around you. Because they'll see how, they'll see what, how you're going through. The Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, I'm not saying... You, you, you bless God for something bad, but you're praising and blessing God because you know God to be a healer. You know him to be a deliverer. You know him to be God, and you know that he will fix it. That's why you're praising him. Amen? That's why you're praising him. That's why you're giving him thanks because you know he will fix it. Amen? You know he will get it done. It, it, it don't make sense. The world says that the life of a believer, you got you to gotta, you gotta give to get, you got to sow to reap. Amen. You got to die to live. It doesn't make sense in the natural world. It don't make sense to praise him when you walk on a job tomorrow and, 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 and folks are talking about you. Amen. It, it, it don't make sense when you're going home and, and your loved ones and, and, and they're backbiting. But you know what? You got a song in your heart. And they look at you, you got a funny smile on your face. They said, she crazy, he crazy. They don't know. They don't know my God. Amen. 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 They, don't, they don't know my God to be a deliverer. They don't know our God that he can fix it. A song at midnight. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother Hampton has uh, given us what God has given him. Out of the book of Acts. So we want to thank the Lord for some words of encouragement that somebody needed to hear today. Um, so with that being said, we want to thank him for allowing the Lord to use him. And may we all stand. Please stand. We're going to have our benediction. There is um, a little breakfast in the back for those of you that want to stay and fellowship a little bit more. And some of you, I know you're going to go back home and probably bed because it's a cloudy day. <coughs> Either way, the Lord is still in control. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us the word today.
Someone needed to hear. Somebody needed to be encouraged. And somebody found out something new about you today. So, Heavenly Father, we just pray that the words that were spoken to our spirit tonight, today will not go away void. That we'll go and tell somebody that we can sing songs of praise even in our midnight times. Even in our dark times, we can say a hallelujah praise to you because you are our light. You are our everything. We can depend on you, and you will never let us down. And for that, we give you glory and praise and honor. And so as we leave this place, Lord God, I pray that your word sinks, will sink deep in our heart. I pray blessings and peace upon everyone that's under the sound of my voice. And that you will take care of all of us, Heavenly Father. Give us a good week, a good night's sleep tonight, a good week on next week. And for all things, Heavenly Father, let us not forget to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be dismissed.